So here is a sort of compendium of chords, a little bit of a sort of a, a dictionary of chord types. Now I'm going to show you these on keyboard, but above each chord that I play, I'm also going to put the fret numbers of the guitar strings running from left to right, which means that the left hand number or an X if, if appropriate, um, will be the sixth string or the thickest string on the guitar. Now, the reason I'm going to show you this on keyboard is because it makes the theory of what's happening a little bit easier to understand um, because it also enables you to find out different versions of the chords that you're going to be playing or different ways on the guitar of, of, of you know seeing how things work. Also it's a bit easier with a simpler sound like this to hear the sound of each chord. So I'm going to show you all of these chords on C and there's your C. So I'm using my erstwhile colleague, the Yamaha YC45D, to demonstrate these chords in that you can control the sound and make it quite simple. So C. All these chords are going to be based on a two octave version of the major scale on C. So the first basic chord type that we've got um, is the major chord, and that's what everything's based on really. It's the major scale that I've just played, that's C to C. The major scale is also shown on guitar above um, my head on the screen, and you'll be able to see the fret numbers that you have to use uh, for that major scale. So they'll be shown as rows of numbers starting on the sixth string and moving over to the first string. So I'll just quickly demonstrate that while you're while you're looking at that. You've got C. And there it is. So the first chord, C major. Happy sounding chord. It's made up of three different notes. You think, oh, okay, there's six strings on the guitar, how's that gonna work? The idea is that actually you use more than one of each note. There's your C chord using all six strings. There are, I've got three C's, two G's, and an E. So there are three different notes, but some of them have been repeated. So for example, on guitar, oh sorry, on the keyboard, if I was going to replicate that chord exactly on guitar, it would do this. So there's six notes there. So you've got your sixth string, eighth fret, then 10th on the next string, 10th again, nine, and then eight, eight. That's how that works. Now, C minor. Only one note has changed. It's the third note of your scale has been flattened. And what flattened means is it goes down by half a step. And if I show you that on guitar here, all that's happened is that I've taken this note, which was the E, and taken my finger off to reveal a note underneath it, which is on my bar finger. And there it is. So, you've got your major and your minor chords. Now here's the seventh. C. It's a C chord with the seventh that's been flattened or rather lowered by half a step. That's the first thing to get used to. A C7 chord is a major chord, but you have what's called a minor seventh interval above that. On guitar, it would do this. Where your seventh note is on the D string. So your major chord has gone from this this last finger, if you take it away, it reveals the bar finger. And there it is. Tell you what, while I'm here, I'm just gonna tune this keyboard. 
so that it's roughly the same as the guitar. So, and there's your C7. C minor seven is the next one, which is actually, the, your seventh note is the same, but the major, you add the or minor component rather. On guitar it's a bit different because there's only six strings here where you put the notes is far more restrictive on guitar than it would be on the keyboard which is why I'm showing it to you on keyboard because actually it's a little bit easier to see what's happening even if you don't play the piano you can see which notes are changing so C7 and C minor 7 so my E has become an E flat and my B has become a B flat on guitars like that. So major seven is actually, it's a little bit easier to fathom from the keyboard, although it's not as common a chord as the other ones. C major seven does this. You've got your first, your third, your fifth, and the seventh. Quite a sort of a dreamy sounding chord. On guitar, it's a bit pickly. So you've got a major chord like this. Now major seven, you have to cross two different frets with the same finger and then put all that in the middle. You can see the diagram of that written over the top of the screen there. So, those are your five main types. You've got your major, you've got your minor, then seven, minor seven, and major seven. Those are your main sort of different types of sevenths. There's one other uh, seventh type chord, which plays with a different um, sort of combination of notes. You have a minor chord with a major seventh. Sounds sort of inconclusive. If I had the ninth, I get my James Bond chord. Goodbye, Mr. Bond. Minor major nine. Now on guitar, there are, you, you're gonna get a few issues with this, and this is where you have to start taking notes away. I know that sounds a bit weird, but actually, you can get away with taking away the fifth note. Now, how that works on guitar is, well, you could do this you could get those exact, exact notes. Notice though that I can't play my, unless I've got a long enough thumb to get round to my root note, but you can forget the root sometimes as well because the bass player will be playing that. So all is not lost, you can, you, in fact, you could do this. You wouldn't need that root either. Or you could, bar across these two fingers, there are these two strings with that last finger, but it starts to get a little bit hard to play. You could do something like this, where you could actually bar that. So sometimes in C, instead of eighth fret, you might find that some of them are easier to play at the third fret position or your A shape. So there's your A, your a shape giving you C there instead of there. Notice they're basically the same but the way in which the guitar is sort of arranged makes it slightly easier to play some chords in this position rather than this one. Now those seven chords that we had, the, for example C7, they can be spiced up a bit by adding the ninth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So your ninth note of your major scale. That chord is called C9. It's not called C add nine. There's a difference. C9, if you just see the number nine, it means the seventh has to be there. Whereas if you see add nine, it's a basic chord with the ninth added. That's the difference between those two chord types. C add nine, C nine. 
you could have a C minor add 9, or you could have C minor 9, which has got that 7th in. C major 9. Five different notes here. It's going to be a little bit more tricky to get those shapes out of here. So we've got, for example, C7, like that. How are you going to get a 9? Well, the ninth is the D. So there it is, there's a D there. That's C9. But it sounds a little bit empty, and the reason is, is that your third that you had on the B string, on the second string there, has now gone because you've had to take that away to give to get the ninth. So there's another way of playing C9 that reinstates that all-important major component, which is this. So I've taken the fifth away and added the third. Now the reason that that actually sounds better, because your, your fifth note, you've kept it at the top here. So instead of this, you've actually got two of the same note there. Here, you've got now five different notes that you needed all along. So here's C9. C minor 9 is this. Where I've actually taken that note and made it into that one. And there's your C minor 9. C major 9. You could do this. You can actually change your shape so that you're not using the, the first string anymore. Or if you can put that finger across two strings. But there's no real need for that. And in fact, the fifth note, you can get rid of that as well because the perfect fifth interval is actually part of this note anyway, if you look into the sort of physics of the harmonic series. So you can get rid of the fifth in any of your chords, unless you see flattened fifth written. Now that's the one remaining combination of the, of the seven type chord is C minor seven flat five. Where you've got C minor seven, and that's the fifth note which you then flatten. And there it is. So there's my C major scale C7, C minor seven, C minor seven flattened fifth. That G then becomes a G flat. Sometimes that's called half diminished as well. Or if you're looking at a chord chart, it'll say M7 flat five, half dim, or a zero with a line through. The answer is you have to be aware of all of them really, which is a bit, yeah. It's, it's just one of those things to learn. Now, that's it with the sevenths. Um, now you can have things like, you know, major seven, sharp 11, uh, you know, I'm gonna, sort of delve into those in a bit. The next thing though I'm going to show you is a six chord. Now C6 is a major chord but you add the sixth note. It's quite a happy sort of... The Beatles used to use it a lot at the end of their tunes. Um, you know, oh, no, yeah. So you've got C6 which has got the, the A, the sixth note. As an A shape, it's easy. You just put your first, your final, your last finger across four strings with your root note. And there's the equivalent on the keyboard. Don't forget, that A and that A are exactly the same. That's an A, it's the same. That one at the end, it's the same. 
doesn't matter where you put your notes, um, apart from your major seventh, where I, um, where I basically had the, um, you can't have this. There is one interval, an octave plus a semitone, which can give you a lot of trouble. That's much better. So C6, you can also have a minor sixth. Now what that does is it just changes the chord into a minor chord, but the sixth stays the same. And what you do with this is you get that. Where you actually have your annular finger flattening across two strings. You've got to be quite careful with that, that you don't catch the second string. You also have one called C6 and a 9 together. Where you actually use the 6th and the 9th. Notice that C6 with a 9 doesn't include the 7th. That's called so that's something different. That's called 13 chord actually. So C6 and a 9. So, you have things like seven with a sharp nine. That's sort of known as the, the Hendrix chord, lots of people call it, because he used that chord in Purple Haze. He had an E7 a, a e sharp nine. Now, if I'm just putting it on C, as I have done with all the other chords, you have a C7. Your ninth was a D, but instead we're gonna sharpen it to a D sharp. A very definite sort of flavor that one. So on guitar it would be just that. So neither of the outer strings, just the middle four. You can have a flat nine as well. Sounds pretty weird. All of these chords are used in context. Now when you're watching this video you're probably sort of halfway through a song and trying to trying to work out what a particular chord is. So very often, if I just play that chord on its own, it won't actually sound really like anything. You think, well, where's that going to go? And actually, it would be probably followed by a chord that makes that preceding chord make a bit more sense. So C7 flat 9, I've got my my index finger across the fourth and the second string, and then I put my two other fingers like that. Flat nine can sometimes go with flat 13 as well. Lots of chord changes sound much more sophisticated when all of the notes don't move very far. For example, that flat nine resolves onto a note that's only half a step away. So the more notes, the more complicated your chords, usually the, f the, the, you know, the less distance those notes travel between those chords, which is what makes them sort of sound a bit more sophisticated. So um, we've got sus4. That's more of a common type. Now, if I'm in C again, Sus4 means that for the first time, your third, whether it be major or minor, actually is not used at all. And instead the third is changed into the fourth. And the reason it's called sus is because it's a suspension. Now what that means is that usually if you hear that chord, it's gonna fall back. It's gonna be, it's first of all, suspended over a resolved chord. For that reason, you can also have a sus2, which is a suspension, but this time below your um, sort of final chord. So C sus4 would be this. Listen to the intro of the um, Pinball Wizard by The Who. 
you've got lots and lots of sus chords at the beginning which resolve onto their major So, C sus as an A shape is this. There we go. C sus2 is that. Now sus2 implies that there's no there's no major component. So if I play this chord. That note isn't there. So, then we have diminished chords. Now these are the ones, the spooky sounding sort of church ones, you know, that implies, you know, th thriller. In theoretical terms, all of the notes are separated by three steps. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you actually get back to where you started. So in geometric terms, that is like um, an equal, it's like um, a, a regular polygon. Something with five sides. Or in this case, four, really, because it's four different notes. Now, diminished chord on guitar does this. I've got the four different notes that I had here, but they're actually arranged in a slightly different order. You have this. That note, don't forget that note and that note are the same. They sound virtually the same. Now, the quite the clever thing here is that C diminished, because it's a regular shape, it's the same chord as E flat diminished, the same chord as F sharp diminished, and the same chord as A diminished. That means that there are four diminished chords that are the same, which implies there are only three different ones because they're, each of those three chords has four um, variants, four sort of um, you know versions. And given there are only 12 semitones in an octave, that means there are only ever three diminished chords. It usually dictates what the bass note is. So C diminished would have a C in the bass. But as a guitarist, you could play a D sharp diminished if the bass player is still playing a C. Now, because of the, sh the way the shape works here, moving up in steps of three, that means that your C diminished, you just move your hand up three frets every time. And if you can fit all your fingers in there, C diminished, you'd end up an octave up there. So, there is a sort of compendium or companion of chords, if you like. Um, there are lots and lots of other chord types. Usually, um, what they sort of say on the page, it might say C major 7 sharp 11. So it gives you specific instructions on what to do, rather than just assuming knowledge. So C7, sharp 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's like a big band ending chord. You think, okay, well, how am I going to do that with this? The answer is you have to take stuff away to reveal the important bits, that is, the sharp 11 and the 7. Now there, what I've actually done, I've added the ninth as well. If you've got any of these components, like sharp 11 or 13, it means that you can add anything below it, but the seventh has to be there. So for example, that is the full version. That's like C, C13 with a sharp 11. But I could take away the ninth. the ninth that I took away there but 
I have to have the seventh there for it to make sense. It could be C major seven sharp 11. That sounds proper dreamy. How are you gonna do that on guitar? Well, you've got to have your, let's say we've got a major seventh. I could find my, um, that or you could have that as well. Now a good substitute while we're here a good substitute for major seven is the six nine chord. They've got a very similar flavor but you don't get the problem at the with having the root note. Do you remember this? If I have this with a major seventh clashing with a root note above it. You don't get that problem with C sixth with a nine. But it has a very similar sort of uh, dreamy, sort of um, quite modern feel that a major seventh has. So I could have my C mate C sixth with a nine. I could actually have my sharp 11 there put my seventh in which means which is technically more correct there are so many things so many ways of approaching this entire subject but I hope that showing this on keyboard has given you some sort of in-depth view as to what you need to play, what you need to, the notes that you need to include. Don't forget, you've only got six strings here in a very limited range compared with that of the keyboard. The piano, you can do any of these chord sequences or chord um, shapes rather very easily because it's it's laid out in front of you and you've got 10 different things that you can do um, indeed with a sustain pedal on the piano you could increase that yeah more you could actually stack these chords up and essentially play anything you like on guitar it becomes a little bit more tricky so you have to start taking notes away c9 is that now i can take the root and the fifth away from any of these chords because the bass player would have the, the root and the fifth. I'll just bring that one further forward. In fact, if I put it on this one. There we go. So you've got the root and the fifth, the C and the G. And then you have all the important stuff at the top. So your third, your seventh, and your nine. So the bass player is going. So those three notes, they're easy to get on guitar. You, this time you just don't strum as many strings because you leave that to the bass player. Or you can play them both at once, but... Anyway, there is a little companion, something to digest. See how you get on with that lot.